Hey, good morning, Pre-Calc. Um, today we are starting Chapter 8. I'll go over your quiz um, answers soon. Those should be up in the grade book today or tomorrow, and I'll post answers. Um, so nice work getting that quiz done. Um, we're doing Chapter 8 now, Polar Coordinates and Vectors. And I'm super excited because artistically, this is a really cool math chapter. Um, if you remember back to um, the day we did Beauty in the Discipline, um, I think it was Catholic Schools Week, and we looked at rose curves, and I gave you guys the secret formulas to creating these, um, I guess we did more like these, we created the, we called them rose curves, that's their name, and you did them in your graphing calculator and came up with these really cool looking patterns. So this is actually section 8.2 um, in your book. So you already have a preview of it. Um, more so seeing what it looks like and how to graph them. Um, and now we're going to understand a little bit deeper of where are they coming from, why do they work, um, and that stuff. So you're already a step ahead in this chapter. You already know some of it, so should help you. Okay, so we've got polar coordinates. Um, you can date and title your notes there, and we've already talked about this a little bit. We said, hey, what about this crazy idea if we now take make our court make our um, our coordinate is now coming from a rotation. So this has been that P, point P has been rotated up. So we're starting from um, the angle from the positive x axis. So we're starting from here and we're rotating up to point P. And that angle, the green theta angle, will now be where we usually put the y of our coordinate. And then our radius is the length. So we're going from the center. So this is at 0, 0. We might actually change it in future more difficult problems. Instead of using the center 0, 0, you'll be um, from a pole. And think of a planet with a stick through the middle, north and south pole um, aligned, and um, and then having the circumference rotate around, or then the rings of it, uh, which rotate around it. And um, polar coordinates just make all of that way easier. If you look at our original Cartesian plane, so this is a quadratic parabola that's been graphed, and it is a function, right? It passes the vertical line test. There's three different parabolas. They all pass the vertical line test. What about a circle? Circle is not a function. And it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So we've created now, so that's the Cartesian plane, right? When you go, if you were counting to this vertex, you would you know, count over 6 and up 4 or whatever number that is. So um, we've created the polar coordinates now. Circles are so much easier now when we have polar coordinates. Other things that are easier, we have um, roses. Roses or rose curves are both their name. Um, ellipses, think about um, also with planets, the shapes that they make, and then just ellipses in production and making and manufacturing things. And figure eights. Okay, um, you can pause this here if you need um, before we flip it. I would definitely write down your R and theta and label them with those two pink titles. Theta being the angle from the positive x-axis and R being the distance from the origin or the pole. And for now, for the most part, you'll be starting from the origin 0, 0. But know that it could start from a pole and that pole could be, you know, over here, somewhere different. Two additional definitions to add for our radius and theta. R is the distance from O to P, O being standing for origin, P standing for the point that we've plotted in a polar coordinate. Theta is the angle between the polar axis and the segment OP. Um, so rather than calling it, we're so familiar with calling it and labeling it the x-axis. So that's really the polar axis now. Um, so just to be proper in our terms there, polar axis there. And then just to recap, um, what is a segment again? I want you to compare to a line where you have arrows on each side going both directions for infinity. And a ray starts at one point and goes outward in one direction forever and ever, but not on the other end. And then a segment, it starts and ends in a very finite position. So just to recap, when you see 
OP, there's no arrows on that line, that means segment, which we've recapped the definitions and compared those there. Uh, another note, theta is positive if it's uh, measured in the counterclockwise direction, and that's the way that we've, um, I've showed you in class. When we start rotating, we rotate in the counterclockwise direction. Now you also can go in the negative direction. You're just counting clockwise, um, and you would have a negative theta, and that just is just, that negative is showing you direction. That just means that you're starting um, in, that you're starting in that counterclockwise, sorry, clockwise. You're starting in that clockwise um, pattern. And then one more note, um, you could have a negative radius. So I know distances always have to be positive, but your polar coordinate could have a negative. And so something a little funky happens. So um, the absolute value of r is the number of units from the pole. Okay, so that makes sense. We know it's a distance. So if, if I give you a negative 3, um, really it's, it's a distance of 3 units from the pole, from the origin. Um, so if r is, is negative, and you, you can see a coordinate, you will get a coordinate with a negative r there. If r is negative, then the point p, r theta, is defined to be the point that lies the absolute value of r units from the pole in the direction opposite to that given by theta. What does that mean? That means, so you, f you find your theta, and we're extending the line. So we went our theta, and we extend the line. So our negative, our radius being negative, tells us we're going in the opposite direction. So instead of our p being at the end of that segment right there, that negative r tells us we'll just extend that segment in the opposite direction, r units, and that'll be your p down there. And I'll show you an example on the next page of what a negative radius looks like um, in an example there. Okay, so go ahead and pause here if you need to get these notes down before I flip the page. Okay. So this is example one in your book and I'd like you to follow along. We're on page 582. 582 and it says plot the polar coordinate 1, um, 3 pi over 4. Okay, so here's, there are four different examples. So we've got um, the first position being the radius, so we're, our, we go 1, and we have our theta being 3 pi over 4. And when you do these in your notes, just do your best estimate. I use the unit circle to guide me. So you can find where is, we're looking for 3 pi over 4, which is right there. That 3 pi over 4, that's like, if you look at quadrant three, that's like the middle one, like the 45 degree of the quadrant, sorry, quadrant two of quadrant two there. Um, so use your unit circle to guide you in a sketch of where you think um, that point P line should be, where that radius line should be. Okay, so that's it. You just plot the coordinate. Plot the coordinate following our new rules of what R and theta are in the um, Carti in the court in the polar plane, not Cartesian plane. They're in a polar plane now. Uh, next example: What if we're asked to plot? Um, we have a positive radius still, and but now our theta is negative. Remember, theta being negative, we just said well instead of going clockwise, now we're going to go counterclockwise. So negative theta, we'll, we are still starting at that polar axis right there, still starting at the same line, but we're going clockwise now when it's negative. So we're going down, and we go down the distance of 1, 6 pi. Again, just look at your thing here. Here's This is a positive 1, 6 pi, and then 11 pi over 6 is a negative negative. 1 sixth pi. And if you even want to write next to 11 pi over 6 equals negative 1 sixth pi, that could be helpful for you. Um, you can do that. Okay. Um, next example, 3, 3 pi. So our radius is still 3. We now have 3 pi. Well, we know. So here's our origin. And starting on our polar axis, if we go, if we rotate, and it's positive, so we're rotating counterclockwise, this is 1 pi, and then going around again, this is 2 pi, going around again is 3 pi. And you have those notes on your 
unit circle. 0, 1 pi, 2 pi, as you make those rotations. You're going around to 1 pi, around to 2 pi, around again, 2 pi plus 1 more pi gives us 3 pi, and we end up right there where we called it the point negative 1, 0. But now we have a given radius of 3, so your polar coordinate there is 3, 3 pi. Okay, and our last one, now I'm giving you a negative radius that we just talked about on the last page. So that negative radius, plot the theta, I would start with your theta, plot it as you normally would. Where is a positive one-fourth? Positive one-fourth is there, and then now we want the opposite. So instead of having the point up here, we're extending the line in the opposite direction, and that is four units from the origin, from zero, from O to P. That is four units, absolute value, the distance of four. But when we name the point, we're naming it a negative four. And the negative on that radius is what is telling you that you're traveling opposite of where you thought you would be. Right? I'm going to go through that one more time in kind of a different way. So if you had, say you didn't even know that your radius was negative yet. Say you only had pi over 4, and you plot your pi over 4, 1 fourth pi. So you find your theta, you draw in that line there, that top one. Then you're given your radius is negative 4. The negative tells you, instead of counting out, you would count out how many, whatever your radius is, 1, 2, 3, whatever it is here. But instead of counting up to 4, the negative tells you that you're going opposite. So get your ruler, extend the line in the opposite direction, and go the absolute value of that. So absolute value of negative 4, meaning you go 4 units in the opposite direction. Okay? We'll see another example. Don't worry. Go ahead and pause that there if you need to copy these notes into your notebook now. Okay. All right, next page. This is example two in your book on page 583. So 583, and we are given the same point, but different coordinates. So as you kind of saw with the three pi, we were past, we passed the point. When we did three pi, you passed the point and then came back to it. So it's pretty clear there's more than one way to get to these points. So our example is two um, pi over three. And we're going to, I'm going to show you five different ways to get to this point. Five ways that are the same. So, same point, different coordinate. So, here's just what's written, the original. This is 2, a third pi. So that's up, that's 1 third pi, or pi over 3. And then our radius is a positive 2, and so we land right there. So we want to get that same exact point. We want that dot to be in the same exact spot on a polar plane but our parentheses of the coordinate are going to differ each time, okay? So here is 1. Let's go one at a time. So what if, like the 3 pi, what if I go up to my point and then I pass it and I make a whole nother revolution? So that's really just adding 2, a rotation of 2 pi. So it's our original um, theta, we're adding 2 pi to it. We've gone, we're still going counterclockwise, positive direction. We went to our point, but then we made one additional revolution around it. And so that angle gets us here, and then we still have our, our radius of 2, which tells us to extend out a distance of 2 and plot that point P. Okay? Same point, different coordinate. Next... What if we go in the negative direction? So we are now going clockwise. So this is now a negative rotation. So we're starting on our polar axis. We're going down clockwise, wrapping around. So that's a negative 5 pi over 3. Negative 5 pi over 3. And a shortcut to finding this, you guys know, um, a whole rotation is 2 pi. So you can take 2 pi and subtract a third pi. Um, and you can switch 2 pi to 6 thirds. 
2 pi would be 6 thirds, so 6 thirds minus 1 third gives you 5 thirds, and then the direction shows you negative. Okay, you're going to have to do some of these, um, create it. So negative, we went clockwise, we ended up in the same spot, our radius is still 2, positive 2. Okay, now what about those negative radius, negative radii that we talked about before? So we're going to do one of those. So we've got, we're going to end up down here on this line right here. And then I'm going to make my radius negative, which tells me I'm taking the opposite side. So if I can end up down here, which I can do that by rotating 4 pi over 3, Again, just some addition, subtraction with your um, what you have. So if I know that distance is a third pi, um, I'm coming over here, and one half of around the unit circle is one pi, and then I'm going down a one third pi, and those are opposite angles. Remember, opposite angles from this geometry, and. So it can be your shortcut to getting that uh, 1 pi plus a third pi. And the negative, we put a negative on our radius there because that tells us, when we have a negative there, that tells us to go on the opposite of that line. So instead of putting the point P, if you had a positive 2, your point P would be down here. Um, but we put a negative there, which tells us we're going opposite of where theta brought us to. All right, and last one, one more way. So I can also get down um, to that same line by going negative 2 pi over 3. Clockwise rotation, since it's negative, we're going down and over, negative 2 pi 3. If my radius was a positive 2, I'd have to put my point down here. I should be out. It would be down there with a radius of 2. We'd count out the distance from the origin 2. But we have a negative 2 in the polar coordinate, which tells us we're now going to the opposite, go pass through the origin, opposite side, and our radius is the absolute value. So we're going a distance of 2 from the origin in the opposite direction of where theta had brought us. Okay, So our final answer there, negative 2 negative 2 pi over 3. And those are your five polar coordinates that are the same point. Five different coordinates bringing you to the same point. You can pause this here if you need these notes now. Okay. As you are finding the same point with different polar coordinates, I'm going to recap that vertical angles from geometry I mentioned. So vertical angles, our definition is that we have an equivalent angle when you have two opposite angles created from two straight intersecting lines. So as you can see, the two green those will be equal angles, so if one's 30 degrees, the other is 30 degrees. So uh, in polar coordinates, 1, 6 pi, uh, that angle uh, being the same across as the opposite. So um, keep that in mind as you are creating your own same point, different coordinate problems in your homework. Okay. One last thing, we can convert between polar and rectangle coordinates. They're clearly related in some way, so we're going to talk about that relationship um, of how they're related. So this section of your notes, relationship between polar and rectangular coordinates. Open your books to page 584, and we have a blue box on page 584, which I've made mine blue. Um, and it says that if you want to switch between a polar coordinate to a rectangular coordinate, um, your x is just going to be your radius times cosine of that angle theta that you have. And to find your y, it is the same as your radius times sine of your angle theta. Okay, you just punch them into your calculator. 
And if you're moving from rectangular to polar, um, r squared, remember then you're going to take your square root of it at the end, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and your theta, you can find it with tangent, so your tangent theta is going to be equal to y over x, the y coordinate over the x coordinate, as you've seen before, we've done, as long as your x is not zero. Okay, now those are the ways to convert with the formulas that are provided to you. You do not need to memorize these, and they are located on page 584. Now you can also uh, visually transform between a rectangular and polar coordinate, which we're going to practice next. So thinking about your unit circle, so I've got my point P here, and that point P, I, it can be labeled two ways. That is a point, and when we're in a polar plane, it would be r comma theta in parentheses. Now if you were in a um, rectangular plane, rectangular um, coordinate plane, you would have it as x comma y in parentheses, and it's the same point. So I'm going to draw a triangle um, from that point and create a, that's a right angle triangle, and I can label all four things I know. I have an x distance, I have a y distance, I have a radius distance, and I have an angle theta there. So I'm going to label those four things, and then I can easily fill out what that point is. Okay? So I'm going to you can pause it here if you want to copy these notes down. Okay, we're going to find the rectangular coordinate and the polar coordinate for a point. So here we're given point Q, and Q is just a capital letter thinking point P for point, um, and we're going alphabetically with capital letters after that just to represent more uh, different points. So you could see P, Q, R, S, and T um, will all be um, just labeling different points in our planes. So let's find rectangular and coordinate. So I've labeled, um, I've created a triangle and labeled we know side X, we know side Y, and we know the radius side there, and we know that that angle will be theta. So we've labeled those, and now let's find what can we find right now. Well, I can find x and y. Um, I've got these are, have been labeled on the uh, plane. So we know that that is a tick mark for 1, and that's a tick mark for 1. So we've got a distance of 1 for x and 1 for y. So we can fill in our rectangular coordinate is 1, 1. Go ahead and fill this in on yours in your example now. You're copying this into your notes. You need this. You'll be doing two of these on your homework. Okay? So let's fill in 1, 1. Okay, so we're halfway there. Now I need to find um, what are the polar coordinates for that. So I need to know what r and theta are for that. So we need to find that radius. And if we go back to the formula we just copied from the blue box into our notes, our formula, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Here we go. Our formula, r squared there, is equal to x squared plus y squared. That's familiar, doesn't it? That's your Pythagorean theorem. We've just replaced c with an r. Same thing. x squared, um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay? So uh, let's write that out and find our radius. Always write your formula first. So we've got our x is 1, our y is 1, so we're going to replace the x and the y with the 1. So here's our formula, replace the x, replace the y, 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, we get a 2. So our r squared equals 2, and we want a single r. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. Now you guys know you are going to get a plus or minus of a square root when you're taking a square root of a whole number, but since we're doing radius and you guys know that's a distance and you can't have a negative distance, we're um, just going to leave this as a positive square root 2 as our radius there. Okay. Now our theta, we also have an equation for that. We just copied down in our notes from the blue box. It told us that we can take the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. So let's write that into our notes. Tan theta equals y over x. So I'm going to replace what was my y and what was my x. Well, y was 1, x was 1, cool. 1 over 1 is 1, so I know tangent theta equals 1. 
Okay. Tangent theta equals 1. Quiz time. Remember back, how the heck do you get to theta from tan theta equals 1? Well, we need our graphing calculator and make sure you are in degree mode right now. Check that you're in degree mode. Write yourself a note that you need to be in degree mode, not radian mode for this. So degree mode, and you are going to find the tangent key, but don't hit the tangent key. You're doing inverse tan of 1 will give you theta. Inverse tan of 1 will equal theta. Go ahead and do that in your calculator now and write yourself the note. Okay. So you've got your blue colored key inverse, find your tangent key. It pre-populates the first part of the parenthesis, so you don't even have to do it. Hit your one and in degree mode and then enter, we get 45. Now that's 45 degrees and we're not writing theta as 45 degrees. We want it in radian. So instead of writing 40, oops, instead of writing 45 there, you're gonna use your unit circle and where is 45 degrees? Right there. What is your radian? You are at pi over 4. So your answer is pi over 4 there. Okay. So here's the notes for that. I'd write yourself that note. Inverse tan of 1 equals 45 degrees. You're in degree mode. We use the unit circle and you got your theta to be pi over 4. Okay. All right. Next example, we're going to find again a rectangular coordinate and the polar coordinate for another point, and this is called point R. So point R, our rectangular is going to be the easiest. Let's start with that. You're just counting your x's and y's. So that's a negative 5 to the left. So 5 to the left, negative 5 for our x. We go up or down 0, so our y is 0. Fill in your coordinate, negative 5, 0. Okay. Now I copied our two formulas for our r and our theta down here. Um, for our radius, we're going to take um, x squared plus y squared. So let's fill in what those are. x being negative 5, use your parentheses and square it, plus a 0 squared. So we get r squared is equal to 25 r squared is 25. Now you know when you take the square root of 25 it's really plus or minus 5 but we are going a radian, a radius distance so we're just taking the positive 5 there. So you can put into your radius there a 5 and we could use this formula um, or you could just look at your unit circle. How do we get an angle if we start from our polar axis and we go over, what is that angle that we've gone, which is just 1 pi. Um, so looking at your unit circle, starting on your polar axis, you're going around, you're ending there at 1 pi, or a 180 degree revolution. So we know that our theta would be pi there. A special case point to clarify in this, if you had plugged in, so this is easy to see, if it's on an axis, one of the points, it just look at it and look at your unit circle and you can figure out pretty quickly, oh, that's obviously 5 pi. You don't even need to use your two formulas. But say you did use the formula, it's things happen a little different. So say I plugged in for um, tangent theta, y over x, our y was 0, our x was negative 5, so 0 over negative 5, 0 divided by anything is 0, so we're taking inverse tan of 0, make sure you're in degree mode, and when you do that, you actually get 0, which, so that's 0, um, 0 degrees, and then 0 degrees on your unit circle would be 0 radians or 2 pi radians, right, equivalent, there's more than one answer to get to the same point. Um, which is not what we had written here. So that's giving you, it's, it's the point, it's giving you the point here. And so we would, you can use that, you can have, so here's another equivalent answer. Instead of one pi, you could have zero and then you would make your radius negative. And that would tell us, right, when you have a negative, you do the theta first, so zero lands you here, and then the radius um, 
being a negative. We know that we're going to go on the opposite side for the absolute value of the radius distance, so 5 over that way. So that negative, opposite direction. So these are equivalent answers. These, these both work for the polar um, position. Again, you could, you could even call that 2 pi if you're starting there, 2 pi right there, and then the negative 5 would tell you go um, opposite side through the origin to the opposite side and go 5. Um, another equivalent answer you could have, um, you could go over and then you could make a, one more full revolution, so that's 3 pi. 3 pi lands you over here where you want to be and your radius distance is that positive 5. So there's four equivalent answers for your polar coordinate r. And up here, I'm not going to go through them, but there's also many equivalent answers for that polar coordinate. So if you, you might vary, have a different answer, because um, you know now there's different ways to write the same polar coordinate. As far as rectangular, though, only one correct answer for rectangular. Okay? Uh, you can pause that there if you want to get those into your notes.